Okay, uh, for today's talk, we're going to talk a little bit about VPN. And in particular, we're going to talk about how to set up an OpenVPN access server on Azure in no time. The same or more or less the same can be done using any other public cloud like Google Cloud or AWS or Oracle Cloud. The steps might be a little different, but more or less it's the same. Or in case you want to set up one in your own environment, of course, that will work as well. Um, VPNs, well, we all know VPNs serve multiple purposes. Uh, we focus here more on securing your internet connectivity. And why would you even bother? So uh, there's lots of VPN services out there, right? Actually, as a matter of fact, in my description below, I'll give a link to the most popular one and reviewing them. Uh, why would you bother to set up your own VPN access server? First of all, if a VPN is free, then there's no such thing as a free service, right? So if the product is free, then you're the product, right? In a way, because uh, obviously the providers need to make some sort of money to run the service. So then the other aspect that you need to look at is where is the VPN service actually collected, connect, um, located? And uh, is it in a country that is notorious for forcing access to certain systems to investigate or even to just suppress the opinions in the country, right? Yes, there's the, I think, 11 eyes, right? So, the four, sorry, 14 eyes. There's the 14 eyes, so-called 14 eyes countries, right? If your VPN provider is outside those, then you're more or less safe. But there's still somebody who has access to your logs. Because how will you really be sure what they promise you is actually true? So that they are not logging any data. So the only way to control that is really if you host the VPN access server yourself, because then you will know what you log and then you will know who has access to it. You may say, okay, Azure, for example, Microsoft would still have access, but that's not really true in, in, the, in, the, in the sense of having access to your actual data on your actual VM. So with this, uh, lots of things have been said. So as you can see here, some of the sample deployment models, you have your VPN, uh, you have a private network in uh, on-site or data center or virtual private cloud, and via the access server from there, you go to to remote access to websites or IoT or site-to-site -site connectivity you can set up as well using that access server, right? Um, let's start maybe by uh, spinning up that particular resource. So as you know, I've spoken about it in my previous uh, in my previous session on how you get an account on Azure and all that. So I'm not going to go into that again. We assume we already have what we need, and therefore we start by creating a resource. So we search the marketplace because in the case of OpenVPN Access Server, there's already ready-made uh, images available. Sorry and you select the open VPN access server. And this one usually is bring your own license. So if you have a licensed version of the open VPN access server, then you can use your own license or you can just set it up with the free tier, which is good for up to two users. We'll choose select here. So automatically selected the subscription. We call this the VPN subscription. Then we create a new Resource group, we call it the VPN RG in this case. Ah, of course, I have done this before. So, to show you how this is done, VPN RRG. And say OK. We would select the uh, VPN access, access server host name so, or VM name. Uh, let's call it VPN VM. We select again. So this is now wherever you select the location now, it's where you will get a public IP. It's where you will actually appear to come from when you use the VPN. So just for the sake of uh, the setup here, we use Southeast Asia, uh, which is the Azure region in, in, in Singapore. And um, we don't need an infrastructure redundancy just for the matter of this uh, setup here today. Already the image, we leave it as is. Uh, we don't want to change anything here. And for the sake of a personal server, also we're not going to change anything here in terms of the suggested size that we see here. Um, 
we can I use again like in my previous uh, uh, session we can use the password here so we can call this VPN user and the password set that up here next we go for the disks uh, we leave this basically uh, more or less as is and we'll just create a small additional disk of 128 gig which will be good enough we click OK networking again we leave the suggestions that we see here we can leave them as default they are okay the way they are public IP you will just get one assigned that is also fine we don't need any any other configuration here a security group is already set up and load balance we don't need for this particular case here again as before we remove the auto shutdown otherwise it would just follow the auto shutdown schedule and shut down your vm when it's not needed this can be used to save save uh, consumption dollars and then advanced we will not change anything here review and create Final validation. This should be up in a minute. Validation passed. And there you go. As we already know from the previous engagements, we're just gonna say create on this one. And then we'll just give it a couple of minutes for it to finish. There we go, the deployment is now complete. Let's go to the resource as we will need the IP. You can see here, everything's fine. We, uh, copy the IP address, we'll need that in a moment. So basically, we have the VM set up now, and the next step is to do the final configuration for which we have to SSH into the box. So new session, as we have done before, Host, then we will just uh, again set up a username and password. Um, name it VPN Azure Video, and then the username is VPN User. The password is what we have selected earlier, and then we click. Okay, and we click OK. We say specify username. Uh, select the credentials. Say OK. And there we are connected. So, of course, first thing is you read in careful and in detail the license agreement, and, and then you confirm with yes that you accept it. Um, will there be a primary access server node? This will be a primary server access node, so we just leave the default. Um, please specify the network interface. So obviously we only have one particular, we, but we bind it to all, which we leave at this. Port number for the web UI, we can leave it as default as well. Same is for the daemon. This is how it should be. Should the client traffic be routed by default, we leave that as default as well. Uh, DNS traffic, it, also this. Use local authentication via internal DP. We keep and yes, and should private, you can configure stuff here if you have other needs. So we just keep the defaults for now for the purpose of showing this video. Uh, by default, we say yes to that as well. And also, do you wish to look into the web uh, admin UI is OpenVPN. Yes, we keep that that way. Specify your activation key. So we will leave this blank for now. We don't have an activation key. And it will already set up the server now with the information we have given. It will create the certificates for the web URL. And there we go. Basically, we are done now on this part, so let's go to the next step, which will basically which will basically be to go to the URL that you can see here.
to the admin user interface and we will use OpenVPN as the web UI user and the same password that we've created when we actually created the VM. So let's do this real quick. So we go to a browser, whichever you prefer. We hit enter. And of course, it's not a proper certificate, so it will warn you. It will warn you, but we will choose to continue. You, of course, can later on create proper certificate, buy a certificate for it, set it up like it is. Uh, we will use the open VPN username and then the password what we have created. And okay, sorry for this. Let me check again. Did I? I get that wrong. No, it's probably just a typo. Open VPN. Okay, let me check this out real quick. So we're gonna log in here now using the Open VPN user as stated and the password we set and of course first things first we have to agree again to the eula and we will do this real quick so as you can see now you have the option to actually activate uh, a bigger license if you have one otherwise you have two vpa VPN connections allowed per default and for free at any given time. So that's basically it. You can go through some of the features here. Obviously, first things will be you look at the users. Is there any users? Open VPN user per default is the uh, is the user that exists. We can now create a, a new user. We could uh, we could configure stuff, uh, advanced VPN settings, VPN settings. Uh, for the sake of this um, demo, let's just uh, show you how this actually will work to authenticate now and that it really will work. Okay, so give me a second. So basically, next step is just simply we can try now create a new profile here. So plus the URL will be basically the same URL as you put in here oh, sorry there we go um, next it will give you a warning about the certificate obviously again because as we said we did not put the valid certificate on this one we just will say accept here for the circle of this we will select the username which again we have only one at the moment open vpn for testing purposes and we put the password as well profile name we can just keep as this port we'll leave it by default we don't change anything here we just say import so as you can see now it's here and now we just test it and then it will ask again for the password which is fine fine and it will connect there we go we are now connected to our own open vpn access server uh let's verify this this is my ip.com you should get a Singapore IP owned by Microsoft Corporation, which is where you are currently connected now. So here on the user management, you could now see uh, um, on the actually on the on the tools. Hold on a second. No, sorry, the status of course status overview. We go have a look at this. So we are allowed to. As we can see, current users. We see we are connected from this IP address, which of course is already a VPN address, so don't try. And obviously you see here the connection duration, the byte send received VPN address and everything that you need to know as well. Yep, and basically 
more or less, that's it for today's session. Then in the next session, I'm going to show you a little bit more about what else you can actually achieve with the OpenVPN access server and where it could help you and what's the purpose of even having one on your own. Thank you so much and see you again next time.